This is definitely an interesting one. I want some rest. Are we having fun yet? So excuse my voice once again, I'm getting over a cold, but I wanted to talk about Dyson Daniels because this is a very interesting prospect for me. Um, I've seen a lot of interviews of him, and one thing he's continually saying is that he wants to be a really good role player for a team and he keeps saying it. he's like i could just fit into a team i can play team ball and one thing about that is oftentimes role players aren't necessarily projected as high as i've seen him projected i've seen dyson daniels go from anywhere to around six all the way down to 20. now especially in this draft where there's so much talent i was just kind of confused like how is a guy that's continuously saying he just wants to be a role player he just wants to be a team guy is continuously seen so high so after looking into him and looking at his stats looking at what type of player he is i have to say he would fit with almost any team so as i as i always do i'm gonna go with his stats first and then we're gonna kind of talk about what type of player he is and I wanted to talk about something in particular that he said. It's kind of like a little Q&A he did. And I just found it interesting nonetheless. So first and foremost, as we always do, he was in the G League. G League excuse me. And this, these were his stats as far as the showcase. So as you can see here, his points, 11.3 points. Uh, he had a 45% field goal percentage and a 25 three-point percentage. That is... That's no bueno, and we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Uh, free throw percentage, pretty decent. That's not bad, about 74% uh, free throw percentage. Can be a little bit better, but hey, that's, you, you can't ask for too much from a guard. Um, and then as we go on, uh, rebounds, 5.9 rebounds, 4.4 assists, turnovers, 2.4, but this is where I really wanted to highlight this guy. 1.9 steals. So let's go ahead and get off, all right? We're gonna go ahead and get off of the stats because I wanna just talk about him for a minute and I wanna rant about him a little bit in a good way. Um, his defense is some of the smartest defense that I've seen from a player in a hot minute, okay? It, it is one of those defenses that I couldn't find a lot of flaws with. He's so good at almost everything <laughs> on defense i will say this this is one thing that i think really stands out about him he's very and this is the word i would use to describe him he's very instinctual okay his instincts are phenomenal on the defensive end he knows exactly when to speed up he knows exactly what his opponent is going to do and he's just so quick he just has that twitch to him where he can just react in such a quick way on defense everything about his defense is pretty doggone good and i have no arguments there and even if we're talking about offense because that's kind of the main question right how is he offensively well offensively he also uses his instincts very well he's always finding the the right guy he's always willing to make that extra pass as i said earlier he is a team guy now as far as shot creation it's not a ton there now it's not that he's not capable but it's just not a ton there but he has some sneaky athleticism to him he can get past guys for the most part um, but one thing I wanted to stand that stood out to me, and this is what I really wanted to talk about. And this is going to segue into that Q&A that he had. One thing that stands out is he's so freaking unorthodox. The way that he plays is so strange. It's almost a mixture. And I don't mean this literal. OK, so don't take this as, oh, my God, he's going to be the next whatever. But it's almost a mixture of Manu Ginobili as far as the unorthodoxness of his shot. And he loves going to his right. And it's merely unstoppable at times not all time okay? not all time needs some work but it, at times it's something that he goes to and it's pretty hard to stop all right so he really loves that now he doesn't go to his left like manu but in his case he would go into his right now why did i say tony parker well he really likes a floater he goes to a floater quite often um and it's a pretty nice pure floater don't always go in but it's, it's pretty nice pretty pure but overall he has a really nice on unorthodoxness to his game where you don't really know what he's going to do next sometimes it's great and sometimes it kind of puts him in bad situations where guys will pull the chair under him or guys will uh literally just 
play with him a little bit maybe play off of him just a tad bit and he doesn't really know how to keep his balance that unorthodoxness is a really positive thing but at the same time it kind of puts him in really bad situations so this is what i wanted to talk about because i also thought about this so someone asked him do you model your game after any specific player and I was trying to think about this and I said, I don't know who he reminds me of. He's a mixture of uh, Kyle Anderson. He's a mixture of Monte Ginobili. He's a mixture of Tony Parker. And you're going to be really surprised by his answer here. So let's go ahead and listen to what he has to say about who he models his game after. To be honest, not really. I think I, I play a, a more different style to the, what I like what most people play. But um, if, if it was someone, I'd probably choose someone like Luka Doncic, you know, because he's a really smart player, being able to create his own shot and create shots for others and stuff like that. So probably on the offensive end, I'd um, say Luka Doncic. Okay, so he didn't have an answer to that. And him going to say Luka Doncic, I'm going to take that with a grain of salt. And I'm just going to assume that he's just a fan of Luka Doncic because there's nothing that I've seen in his offensive game that speaks Luka Doncic. Now, maybe his IQ, his IQ is pretty high. Um, his, inst his instincts are really good, but that's about it. Now, I want to talk about the biggest red flag about him. And it's not something that's the end all be all or anything like that. Like, it's not something that you look at and you just automatically say, I don't want him on the team, get rid of him. Ah, yeah, no, no. One thing that stands out, and we talked about it briefly, is that three point shooting. Now, the worst part about it is that there's a few things he has to work on. First and foremost, his three-point percentage is so bad because he's not a good catch and shooter. Um, oftentimes, from what I've seen, he will get in situations where his feet aren't necessarily in the right positions to shoot. Um, it takes way too much wind up, and I guess that's kind of where that Kyle Anderson comparison comes from. Um, and he just kind of comes across as flat-footed at times when he's shooting threes. He has to work on his release a little bit, and I think it's going to have to get a little bit quicker because as it stands right now, it's very slow and <clears throat> it's a lot of wind up, and it just it just doesn't it just doesn't work. And if you even watch any anything of him, you'll see every single time, and I mean every single time, the defender goes under the screen. They they know that he can't shoot. And they go on the screen because they're not afraid of what's about to happen. And most of the time, it's a clank. So that's something he's going to have to work on to open up his game. But overall, as far as the things I like about him, I like the fact that he's unorthodox. I like the fact that he's a team player. I like the fact that he has a willingness to shoot. And I absolutely love his defense. His defense is absolutely incredible. Um, I would argue one of the top ones in the draft as far as his defensive ability and instincts. So let's go ahead and move over to pros and cons list. Like I always say, I don't look at this. I just pull it up and then I try to see if I agree with any of it, disagree with any of it, and if there's anything that I missed. So let's talk about his pros. So it says he's going to go in the lottery, which more than likely he will. Um, so pros, decent score off the dribble. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, that unorthodoxness really helps. Can post up smaller players. That's one thing I didn't really talk about. He has a decently good uh, hook shot, but more often than not, I kind of like his uh, floater a little bit better. Excels at scoring on off-ball motion plays. Solid playmaker, yes. Uh, moves fairly well off uh, the ball on offense. See, that's one thing too. If he can just manage to shoot his shot a little bit faster and he can manage to put a little bit more power on it because it's often short, I think that it would really help him. A uh, solid rebounder for his size. Uh, sure. Adequate defender that can get steals. He's a very good defender. Uh, solid athlete, sneaky athleticism. Uh, yes, see, cons. Needs to improve his shooting. Yes. Prone to hoisting up questionable shots. I think it's more so it's, it's just his shooting is bad. Can play too wildly on offense. Well, that comes down to that unorthodoxness that we were talking about. Um, like I said, a lot of times these teams or these players would just pull the chair up under him or just kind of get out of the way and he's expecting that contact which he's not bad as far as controlling himself once he gets that contact but it seems like players caught on to him pretty quick that he wants some of that contact and they just back off of him and he'll just fumble um yes yeah, he unselfish to a fault well i already said that he makes that extra pass can be undisciplined defensively i didn't see a lot of that 
um, at least from what I've seen. So that might be something I'm missing, but to me, it seems pretty good. Um, needs to add strength, sure. Dyson Daniels is a tall, agile, ball-handling guard that can do a little bit of everything when he is on the court. He can score the basketball in a variety of ways, and he can also uh, he is also a solid playmaker. He is he's having a fairly good season in the G League right now, but he will need to improve his outside shot in the meantime. Currently, he projects to go in the mid first round range 2022 draft. And I want to go ahead and add as well. Um, I believe as it went on uh, the season, when it went on, you know, later in the season, he did play a little bit better. So it's not that he was just terrible all the time. He did play a little bit better. Uh, so just 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 want to throw that out there. But overall, I understand how he got uh, this high. I understand why a team would take him because, look, really good defender, a lot of two way ability, high IQ. Um, he's, he's another one of those Canada guys, those combo guard Canada guys that kind of making a wave in the NBA. Um, but look, he, he has everything that a team can really need. He just has to improve his catch and shoot ability. I'm not expecting him to go to a team and be able to be this elite shot creator or be a star of a team or anything like that. But I do see a lot of upside um, as far as two way ability. Um, but look, me, I'm huge on IQ guys, and this is an IQ guy. So you guys let me know what you think. Um, if you want to support the channel, only $2 per month, Patreon and YouTube members. I'll get with you later. Until next time, deuces.